in the next lecture i will focus upon the label free detection platforms and their applications in today's lecture i will walk you through various label free detection techniques available and their advantages over the label based detection platforms to study the molecular interactions and their kinetics there is always a debate whether we want very accurate quantification using labels or labels are going to affect the properties of biomolecule and we should use the innate properties and have the label free quantification so we'll have these discussions in this lecture further we will discuss about a few label free platforms in detail and their in interpretation of the sensorograms obtained so let us continue with my lecture which i delivered in this workshop let me start with the outline uh, what i'm going to talk a uh, couple of things which you have been hearing already the field of interactomics i'll not take much time on that uh, but then i'll move to comparing the detection platforms which is because you have you know hearing lot of lectures from josh on protein microarrays you have heard many other speakers on reverse field arrays and peptide arrays all of those require some level of uh, you know label based detection system and study you also started getting exposed to some of the label free platforms so brief comparison of those two type of uh, detection platforms uh, some of the overview of the label free technologies uh, there are many in fact you know you just got uh, some exposure of spr study surface plasma resonance uh, but there are you know many emerging technologies which are already in uh, have started making some impact Uh, but many of them are still in the testing phase some of the latest popular you uh, know label free te technology platforms uh, as we go along in the course uh, and then some of the you know brief overview of applications uh, i'll not have too many case studies but i will at least give you the flavor of what all things can be done because our intention with this course is uh, that many of you can start planning your experiment and think about you know how broadly these technologies could be used for everybody because they are not biased for any kind of sample they are not biased for any specific project uh depending on your objectives i think you can very much modulate these things for your own research so i'm sure by now you are convinced that you know these kind of technologies uh are very useful to study the entire uh, interactome which is uh, involved in many of the uh, important activities whether you talk about signal transduction to splicing morphology growth metabolism translation dna replication these are all pretty relevant for any kind of uh, physiological processes which we want to study so therefore many type of protein interaction methods have come forward the traditional approaches includes is to hybrid and different type of ip methods uh, and the latest technologies you are now happy and convinced that you know protein microarrays uh, are you know emerging as one of the solid platforms including cell free expression based arrays which includes snap arrays and then we have couple of label free platforms the biosensors which are equally crucial as well so let's talk about detection platforms and their comparisons so uh, you you want to detect the signal after doing the assay right and that's where uh, whatever you have hypothesized at the end only looking at the dots or looking at the curve you know that your experiment has worked or not so therefore you need to have some robust detection platforms and to do that either uh, you are using some sort of label to follow your uh, experiment and then you are trying to measure those labels either with the fluorescence based methods or chemiluminescence based methods some time even radioactivity based assays can be very powerful uh, so you require some sort of labels which could be used as a marker to follow your experiments or you can also think about label free approach because whenever you are labeling a protein uh, irrespective of what chemistry you use you are adding something from outside on a given molecule and that is going to definitely in some way affect the overall structure overall binding and it may result into certain artifacts so for many kind of you know critical drug discovery platforms uh, it is you know it becomes more apparent that you probably do not want to change the native structure of the molecules and you want to study them in their own uh, you know natural environment as much as possible without adding any sort of extra label on top of them as a result many type of label free platforms have emerged which essentially aims to look for the properties of the molecule itself if two molecules are binding what kind of mass is getting changed 
what kind of dielectric properties are getting changed, do we see some sort of percentage reflectivity change because of the uh, binding uh, intensity, can we see some sort of interference change. Many of the physical principles uh, are being used to look at the molecules and molecular interactions and can we measure those properties. So as I mentioned the label based, the readouts could be many of these fluorescent, radioisotope, HRP based systems. For label free you got little exposure of SPR, even many of the nanotechnology based platforms like urban nanotubes etc are also equally uh, powerful and they have been used for doing these kind of measurement as well. Label based, one of the major advantage here is that these technologies are available, uh, the kind of you know every lab, every center will have those scanners so that you have easy readouts, you can definitely do the scanning, I am sure in any given building you will have some of these instruments available. Regents are easily available even if you do not have HRP, you do not have Psi 3 or any of the dyes, I am sure you can borrow from somebody in the neighboring lab and you can do the experiments. But you cannot do these kind of experiments with the label free kind of approaches when the technology are very specific. However, the label free platforms are avoiding the tag related issues which you observe in case of label based. Uh, and most importantly, you are actually monitoring the biomolecular interactions in the real time manner and that is pretty powerful because all the protein micro technologies are great, but it is like you know takes whole day time to do the experiment, sometimes even you know longer if you are doing a blocking and all. And at the end of the day, then only you are relying on the scanner to show you that you know your spots are lighting up or not or you see some sort of you know huge background, you see you know your controls did not work out and you are equally you know hugely disappointed. But you had literally no control on as the experiment progressed whole day. In this case here if binding is not working, you will you know after you will watch just for 20 minutes time, stop it and now you will bring a solution, change the concentration, change the temperature, do different pH scouting. So you have many ways of planning to modulate the experiment, you are not going to just wait for something to happen 10 hours time and then you say that okay it's happened or not happened. More importantly that you know in case of microarray or other kind of label based platforms, you are only measuring the signal at the end which gives you an idea it happened or did not happen. So you have a positive signal or a negative signal. So an interaction happened or a biomarker is present, you can just say qualitatively it is showing you signal. And of course you know that you have many different measures of uh, having different controls which could be used to do the quantitation as well. But in this case, when you are talking about some of the label free platforms, you have even ability to say that you know yes binding is happening, but what can be on rate, what can be off rate, what can be overall decision constant for these and how my kinetics is actually getting changed. So these are the added information on top of what you would only obtain in the microarray based or any kind of label based platform. So that is added advantage of the label free technologies. So label based because of the tax you know you, they might interfere with the function you may have certain kind of issues which can give you artifacts and this is end point measurement because you are not having control on how the assay progresses. Uh, label free technology uh, having lot of advantages, but they are still very specialized, many of them are not available in many labs, you will not find the those biosensors available everywhere, uh, they are sometimes more costly and again you still have to ensure that all the signal which you measure is coming because of the actual binding and not because of the bulk effect, not because of something else which is happening and you are seeing an artifactual uh, response. So many of the things are still under the kind of uh, you know more in fancy, more early developmental stage which needs to be tested out well. So now just to give you a feel that you know we are uh, covering two or three label free technologies in this course, uh, but there are many which are actually under development. And there are a lot of physics uh, people who are actually you know contributing towards this way of making many type of biosensors where they are involving different type of physical principles how they could be used to measure molecular interactions. So you know so many I am sure you know you can find out SPR just one among them, one of the label free platform which uh, can give rise to multiple type of even technology platforms including surface plasma resonance which we uh, talked briefly surface plasma resonance imaging based platform SPRI or nano hole arrays, all these three uh, depends on one of the principle which is SPR. Then there are many platforms which are emerging based on the ellipsometry, uh, we have interference based methods, we have electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, atomic force microscopy, enthalpy arrays, scanning Kelvin nanoprobes, micro cantilevers, so I am sure you appreciate that there are many technologies which are under development right now. They are all looking at different type of physical principles which could be used for looking at the biomolecular interactions in the label free manner. So while we cannot talk everything right now, but at least some of them I will, I will talk, uh, I will give you some examples of those. 
But idea here is that, you know, many times when a physical scientist work on these kind of biosensors, their objective is to only show that two molecules are interacting and by looking at interference or conducting change or, you know, reflectance change, you can measure a binding. And then they stop over there because they would have taken very standard protein sets. You know, they will take BSA, anti-BSA, or they will take, you know, if you tell you know, there are five more interesting proteins to test out, they will take those highly abundant protein and the robust antibodies to test out those assays. And these things are usually not good because when you want to try out your actual experiment, uh, which is depending on many times low abundant proteins and antibodies are not so great for them, then I think, you know, your assays don't work as robust as you would have seen at the you know, proof of concept level. So many of these technologies are still under proof of concept level, which needs to uh, show that what could be done at the uh, actual biological sample level. Therefore, what all I have shown here, not everything has reached to biological lab, and not everything is actually holding up to the biological experiment, because biological samples, uh, they have a lot of low abundant proteins. You will not have that strong analyze to test out. All right, so uh, all the label-free measurements, irrespective of which platform we talk, they're all measuring the biomolecular properties, and it's pretty much kind of uh, without changing anything on top of them. Uh, and it's adding the information which is providing you either kinetics information or you are looking at the affinities. These are added information which one could obtain along with, you know, just yes, no answer which you can obtain from other binding experiments. You know, more importantly, the new areas which are emerging which is essentially system biology area, the intention is, can we generate a lot of these values, which is on rate, off rate for different type of binding interactions which are happening, and now develop those as a model and wiring diagrams, which could be used to predict many unknowns, because how many actual experiments can you do for so many, uh, you know, proteins? So let's say, you know, for a given protein, wild type condition, and its many mutant forms, which you want to test their affinity, certain, you know, with a drug or with other, other molecule, now you can build, let's say, from 50 of their mutants, you can develop some of the values which can give you the, uh, some models. And now can those models be used to predict the behavior of another unknown mutant? So that kind of stuff is going to really happen if we have the available information or at each level of on rate of binding, off rate of binding, what is the KD value, and then you build the models, and that's where a lot of system biologists uh, have started working in this area and are going to contribute much more heavily towards these directions. So different type of label-free techniques, as I mentioned, are in various developmental phases. Of course, Bayer is pretty leading in that way because you have already over you know, 20 plus years of the technology in field available. But many technologies, you know, which are still just emerging, including some of the biolayer interferometry based methods, have really come up very forward fast. Even MST technologies are, are emerging. So those could be good platforms to be used. I'm just showing you very briefly some of the principles involved of uh, various type of label free technologies. One of them is showing you here, you know, these kind of nanowires, nanowire sensors, uh, on which antibodies are immobilized. If a protein binds specifically to this antibody, then you will see a change in the conductance happening, and this is recorded here over the time period. Simple technology, simple concept can have so much utility clinical wise. Imagine that, you know, uh, when a lot of SARS issues were happening, uh, different type of viruses people are getting affected. That time, you know, immediately on a lot of, you know, uh, metal detectors on the airports, these type of platforms were used to detect that whether patients or the individuals who are coming, are they carrying these kind of antigens uh, possible and then they were quarantined and all kind of these things were happening on the airports. So just, you know, immediately these papers were, were published, a lot of, you know, applications started emerging out of them. Simple concept, you are measuring antibody antigen interactions, looking at the conductance change, and if that can give you some idea that, you know, some individuals are carrying those antigens which are, you know, uh, going to give rise to certain viral disease, then probably you can uh, do much more specific tests on those. So, another platform which is, uh, you know, uh, which has shown some promise because of the low cost, uh, and that is ellipsometry based platforms, where uh, you are measuring how much polarization change you can see uh, as a result of binding. And, you know, again, it's very a simple setup with uh, involves a microscopy and CCD camera, and it ideally measures the protein contents, which is not uh, unlike the uh, other platforms which are requiring a lot more costly setup. This platform is very cost effective method, although it has not shown as many biological applications as we would have seen from other platforms, but this was a robust thing to, to show that in cost effective manner you can do label free technologies. 
Uh, one more thing which, you know, uh, we have seen some good promise of this paper based on spectral reflectance imaging biosensor or SRIB, where you have, you know, different layers of silica and silicon dioxide. And by varying the you know, concentration of this, if you have now the protein printed in different amount, you can see their change in the binding happening. And this particular uh, concept was again you know, published in PNAS, uh, which shows how beautifully just looking at the change in the interference, you can uh, see that how much material is printed in different quantity and can be measured in the label free manner. Then comes the SPR technology, which is surface plasma resonance, which you are exposed already on uh, a prism and on a gold slide. You have certain antibodies printed, for example, some protein molecules are flowing here. And as you see the binding is happening, uh, by changing the you know, percentage of reflectivity, uh, you can measure those particular things in the real time manner. And what you are actually measuring, these kind of plasmons, which are uh, on the interface of the gold surface, when these you know, electrons are being generated. And those you are measuring throughout your uh, you know, uh, reaction. And by changing the solution, then you are seeing what is the SPR angle being changed from one to other condition and those SPR angle is being used to monitor your entire binding uh, reactions. And that you measure in, in the uh, terminology which is used as SPR sensorogram. Uh, these sensorograms could be uh, used to monitor your entire binding activities for the reactions. For example, initially you when you are uh, just you know having the molecules coming in uh, and start to bind with the antibody for example, uh, you can start seeing there is an initially baseline there which is uh, stable. As the reactions are happening, there is some binding happening, you can see an on rate happening, association of these molecules. And then after some time they will you know, get saturated, you are still injecting your buffer and then ideally they should start washing off. And then you will see you know, off rate going in. And now the, you, know, you are doing these experiments on the noble metals which are very costly, essentially gold you are using. So you want to regenerate, you want to reuse the same slide again and again at least couple of times. Uh, so then you are trying to do regeneration and you are using some mild acids to uh, chop off your this binding of molecules without disturbing your you know uh, printed molecules and then this chip can be used after you know again you have to wash off with the buffer couple of rounds and the same chip could be used again for next round of interactions. So uh, in this way you know uh, you can reduce the cost of the experiment otherwise the, the gold slide and all these chips which we are buying are way too costly. So but what in, it's offering you of course it's offering you much more powerful information as we uh, talked, you are getting the kinetics or the rate of reaction, uh, how you, you know you can monitor in the label free and the real time manner. You are looking at both on rate and off rate of these uh, reactions to happen, unlike the label based methods where you are just talking a binding is happening or not happening. Here you are saying that okay binding is happening, but probably the on rate was very fast or off rate was you know very slow. So those kind of information you can obtain and many of these informations having lot of uh, utility in the pharma sector uh, and that's where you know uh, even we see that you know more than academic labs the you know Bayer core and SPR and many of the label free technologies are much heavily used by the uh, pharma sector who are drug discovery and drug, you know drug designing and drug testing kind of you know experiments they have a lot more utility for you know using these platforms because uh, it's just having binding information is not sufficient how the binding is happening on rate and off rate differences are much more crucial to to know over there. So uh, advantage of SPR, I sure you are all convinced that you know you have a lot of promise here, you are not doing any sort of extra thing on your molecules which you want to test for interaction. So there is no labeling which you are applying. Uh, you are directly measuring the biomolecular interactions using the physical properties. And then uh, you have full control on how the reactions are progressing. And as a result, you can actually modulate the conditions to make it work. Many times we are trying out, you know, uh, different type of concentrations of different antibodies when we are uh, doing the first initial screening or, you know, you can use uh, different type of flow rates to even try out. So many things you can play with it in the, in the initial round of experiments to find out what can be the best condition for your binding to be observed. And now once you finalize those conditions, then you can apply the same on your full experiment with many of the molecules of interest. All right, so I think we have talked that, you know, there is a lot of merit for using these things, but of course there are limitations as well, because everything what you are relying, uh, looking at the mass changes, and sometimes this could also come from the bulk effect that it may not be the actual binding happening from the molecules. So when you are immobilizing the molecules, depending on the size of those, detection also, you know, going to get uh, less or more sensitive because exponentially as, you know, the distance is further from the chip surface, you're going to see the loss in the signal. And the detection limit estimated is around 200 nanometers uh, in this cases. 
limited to the choice of you know metal which you are using because that is the gold metal which is useful for doing this kind of experiments your samples has to be really clean it has to be homogeneous you have to do the you know proper removal of all the gas etc just so that you no you know, bubble is blocking uh, your, your columns it's, it's, there's nothing is getting clogged as your you know uh, flow rate is uh, changing for uh, measuring the binding so sample preparation and uh, these you know probe attachments could be difficult but i'm sure it is either uh, some of the generic thing which is applied for any kind of uh, you know the chip based assay which you have to follow you have to ensure that you know your washing and your all kind of clean up steps are well performed uh, otherwise you will have many non specific interactions which may result uh, to to ensure that you are getting a specific signal uh, it's good idea to have lot of positive controls and you can vary the concentrations of those and see you know till what is smallest lowest concentration you can still measure those signals and those can be used to follow your various uh, you know uh, not everything you can do on one chip if you have to test many of your uh, molecules so then those kind of you know one uh, flow cell let's say i'm sure you are aware of the different flow cells involved in the bayer core experiment for example so one flow cell you can just block it which can be used for you know your qc checks for many experiments and then those could be uh, and you can vary the other flow cell for uh, testing your unknowns so therefore you will have a still full control even as you are going along the chip has not gone bad and your you know the molecules are for positive controls are behaving same way so of course you know many of these things uh, in uh, the field of uh, label free technologies you have to avoid ensure that the binding what you are seeing is actually real binding it's not artifacts it's not uh, uh, and sometime you will see a reaction is happening on the temperature dependent manner so you have to also you know play with those i think fortunately now some of these instrument and technologies have now to give you the range from 4 degrees to you know uh, you can vary till 37 to 50 degrees even to try your different conditions of course you know we are talking in this course about high throughput platforms intention is i'm sure you know uh, with josh talk you are pretty much uh, you know convinced that if you can have the chip which can screen 10000 proteins of course you know you are going to talk very quality data high quality data uh, you are reducing your time you are reducing the cost everything and so much variation which comes by, by doing you know uh, two many experiments on if you had 1000 protein on one chip versus 10000 on one chip right same thing is applicable here as well on the spr based platforms where if you are doing only four maximum interactions or four maximum testing of the you know binding on the via core kind of platform uh, versus if you can do thousands on, on a different platform and that's where the concept of spr imaging became very powerful with hope that can we build the platform which can do the high throughput interaction studies using the same principle what we have used for spr So I hope after attending my today's lecture, you are now able to appreciate the utility of using label-free detection techniques to define the biomolecular interactions and analyzing their binding and kinetics. Although there are many label-free detection platforms currently available, but most of them are still under infancy and they have shown the utility only at the proof of concept level. It means most of these new technologies and biosensor platforms they have shown the experimental evidences that these principles work only with the known pair of robust antigen and antibody based detection however when you have to test out the actual biological samples and the biomolecules which are in the physiological context they are very very in subtle amount very low concentration then one need to think about how to use technology platforms robustly in this light one of the technology based on the spr and the bayer core technology have over the period from long time shown its utility also a, a new advancement in the area biolayer interferometry technology has also shown lot of promise nevertheless spr is one of the most acceptable platform to study the biomolecular interactions whose principles and data analysis was explained in, in this lecture i hope now by looking at a sensorogram looking at these binding curves you can now make sense of what has happened in this particular experiment especially for the interaction kinetics we'll continue our discussions on latest advancement in this area and also 
how to integrate different technology platforms with existing label free biosensors in the next lecture. See you then. Thank you.